brothers and sisters in Christ, greetings from Rome, and happy first Sunday of Advent. My name is Brother Thomas Piolata. I come from the United States, but I'm currently here in Rome pursuing further studies. And I want to reflect with you today on the Gospel of today. So the first Sunday of Advent, the Gospel. And I want to begin by looking at the one of the final words of the Gospel. Watch. In fact, this is the final word of today's gospel. Watch. And so the church begins Advent with this gospel, with this admonition, and so she invites us to watch. But of course, we have to ask, to watch what? What does the church want us to be ready for, to be attentive for? After all, this seems to be the way in which she introduces us to Advent. Now, in today's world, we watch a lot of things. We were watchful of so many things. We watch politics. We watch the news. We watch movies. We watch music, current event, world relations, and so forth and so on. We have a seemingly unlimited access to information, and we're always watching a lot of screens. In fact, in order to see me, you're watching a screen. <laughs> but certainly... The gospel is not speaking about this. The gospel is not telling us, go watch more movies, go watch more screens. So what is it getting at? Well, I think that we can approach this if we understand Advent as a time of waiting. We are waiting for the Lord, literally for his Advent. Advent, it comes from the Latin advenire, which means coming towards. We're waiting for the Lord to come towards us. And so let me suggest that when we stop waiting, at that moment we stop watching. There's a great Jesuit priest and martyr of World War II, Alfred Delp, and he has a series of Advent reflections. And at one point he says, the most important thing is to wait, to be able to wait until the hour comes. So my dear brothers and sisters, friends of Alpha, Advent calls us to wait. And more specifically, Advent calls us to wait for God, for Emmanuel, which means God with us, Christ. In a world that continues then to grow more and more engulfed, right, by the abyss of meaninglessness, we live in a world without meaning. The more and more we live in a world that's drowning in our own personal attempts, at utopia or self-realization, in a world that is beguiled by artificiality and enslaved by the flesh, let me suggest that to become a man or a woman of waiting is prophetic. It takes courage. The gospel speaks of the man traveling abroad today. And I really like that, that, that idea, that image. I have this image of someone who does not wait, Internally, he's over here, he's over there, he's traveling everywhere, he has no center of gravity. And in stark contrast, Christ is telling us to be someone who waits, who is watchful and attentive, not like the man who travels abroad and has no deep center of gravity. So it's a question for us. Internally, are we like that man who travels abroad? Perhaps Advent can be a time when we recenter ourselves in the truth of life. Here, then, think of the great characters of Advent, Joseph and Mary. Both of these figures were radically available to the will of God, either in, in the Gospel of Matthew or in the Gospel of Luke. To both of them, the Lord communicated his plan, and they both, in their freedom and immense availability, accepted what the Lord had asked of them. Why? They were waiting. They were waiting and they were available. Even though the Lord completely disrupted their lives, they were waiting and they were available. The Lord disrupted their plans, yet they were waiting for that. And so if we're not waiting for the Lord, we'll miss him. I, I think it's important to stress here that to wait for God then is to wait for him without expectation. That's what Joseph and Mary did. They didn't have a plan for what God would do in their lives. They were simply open to what he would do. They were waiting for his disruption. 
So let me suggest then, brothers and sisters, do not wait for the Lord to fix someone else, right? Don't wait for the Lord to solve your own personal problems or to solve your financial problems. Do not wait for the Lord to plan your future, to tell you what to do next, per se. Simply wait for the Lord, and then let his coming disrupt you. So what does this waiting look like? Let me turn for a moment to St. Francis. In one of his writings, he writes, Let us always make a home and a dwelling place in our hearts for him who is the Lord God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who says, Be vigilant at all times. So Francis here is telling his brothers, Be with the Lord God always. So we stop waiting for the Lord then, brothers and sisters, when we no longer have room for him in our hearts. If we're waiting for something else, and this will always be an anxious waiting, it means we have stepped away from the Lord. Shortly after these words, Francis continues. He says, let us adore him with a pure heart. Let us hold on to the words, the life, and the teachings, and his holy gospel. This is the genius of St. Francis. He's keenly aware of this, that if we want to have a home for the Lord, we must pray, we must draw close to the Lord, we must have a pure heart, we must hold on to the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, dear brothers and sisters, in this time of Advent, in this time of waiting for the Lord, let us pray. Waiting is inseparable from prayer. In drawing this to a close, then, I'd like to say one final point about Advent. Advent reveals to us that the Lord is not a king who remains enclosed in his own castle. It's very significant that last week we celebrated Christ the King, and then now we're, we're given a revelation of what this king looks like. And who is this king? It is the king of Advent, the king who comes towards us. It is God with us. This king is love. Here let me turn to the first letter of John. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. Brothers and sisters, Advent reveals that the God who created heaven and earth is the God who is with us, Emmanuel. Advent is the great reminder that we are not alone, that we are loved. Our God is the God of Advent, the God of the approach, for whose approach we dare to continue to wait. Thank you, brothers and sisters, and I wish you a blessed and holy Advent.